Hey, welcome aboard. This morning, I'm going to the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Yeah, talk to some people up there. So, we're in Lower Manhattan now, and let's do this. We're on Hudson Street, which is actually several blocks in from Hudson River. I don't know why they call it Hudson Street. Maybe the Hudson used to be right here, and then we just kept filling in the land because Manhattan real estate is so valuable. You can just add a fixed land to the land that's already there, and then it's like printing money. That's what I think they really did. You know, there's someone in the street that reminds me of Chuck Nice. He looks just like Chuck Nice. Ha! It's Chuck Nice. Hey! <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Yo, what's Chuck, up, man? how you doing, you man? Let me in the car. No, I didn't know you needed a ride. <laughs> I didn't know you needed a ride. Who is this? Oh, this I picked him up earlier in Manhattan. Is that what we do? He's now? My friend right here. That's our thing now. My friend. We just riding around yeah, picking just, up random strangers. We just met. Yeah. That's the new yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> so where are you going? Uh, I'm headed uptown, man. Where are you headed? To the Intrepid at Sea, Air, and Space Museum. That's very coincidental because I just happen to be going to the same place. You are lying. <laughs> <laughs> you are lying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, man. I'm headed to the Intrepid because I'm headed where you're headed. Actually, you know. I'm homeless, Neil. I got no place that's to go. That's how it is. You know, I don't have no place to that's go. That's why you're always where we need that's you right. at any time. That's exactly. <laughs> Most people in New York are actually homeless and they don't even know it. <laughs> they don't even know they're homeless. They live, in, they live in their tiny little apartments. They have no idea that they're actually homeless. Nobody wants to be in their tiny little apartments. That's why these streets are filled with people all the time. That's right, because they don't stay. They don't stay at home. You know my favorite homeless joke? What's that? I'm so broke, I can't even pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a Cosby kid right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very cool though. The uh, Intrepid Sea Air. It used to just be Intrepid, and then they said we got we got more we got more going on here than 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 what meets the eye. Right. Because the Intrepid, of course, is an aircraft carrier, and its okay. relevance to space is, of course, it actually picked up several of the capsules that landed in the Pacific. Oh, really? And yes. I did not know that. Yes. Yeah, so it has so a legacy with the space program. Okay. So uh, when they went shoot. Because before the shuttles, yeah, before the shuttle, before you could land, you know, in a, on a, in an airport, basically, right. the guys would come out of orbit and they would be descending by parachute in a capsule, and then they'd land right in the ocean and wait around till they get picked up. You know, that's that's got to be a little scary, though. Yeah, it's a little primitive too yeah, when you think very about primitive. it. Like, yeah, uh, and did, they had to have some kind of homing beacon because the ocean's kind of big. They're called binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> There was no, there's no GPS back then. Oh no home, there's no cell phone towers. No cell phone towers. No, no, no. They, so they did they. No, it's pretty easy. Did they calculate the coordinates of the drop? You know where they're approximately where they're supposed to be, and there's huge parachutes. So they got this. Okay, so that's and, yeah, yeah, and they have radar too. But so but, oh, okay, so they right, right. so they track the radar on the yeah. Way plus, down. when the thing lands, the thing itself has has uh, balloons, you know, to keep it afloat. To keep it afloat. Yeah, otherwise, it would just sink. And so, particularly filled with water. Right. So, yeah. So, the Intrepid has this legacy. And so, they folded that legacy into it as a, as a memorial to the Second World War. Okay. And the Intrepid was actually hit by a kamikaze plane. No. So, this thing's got all kinds of bad... I mean, it's, 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 it's been around the block this thing. So wait a minute, a kamikaze actually... Yes. That was not a very good kamikaze pilot. No, stop! That guy, what side do you want? I'm, well, I'm You're just, getting out here. Get out. <laughs> Hold me back. Get out, you traitorous <laughs> bastard, you. <laughs> Rooting for the Japs. <laughs> No, uh, but I'm just saying, like, you would think that if you crashed a plane into an aircraft carrier, you would have done enough damage where it didn't get to continue. Right, so what, remember, it's, a uh, aircraft carrier is a military machine. It's right. a, it's a battle-hardened vessel. So the, the, the kamikazes would aim for the deck, okay. which had access down through where other parts of the ship would be. Okay. But if you just, if you just, if you just hit where the planes land, you'll damage where the planes land, but you're not going to sink the ship. You're not going to sink the ship. No, okay. no. So, uh, they're they got to hit key spots. Ergo, 
making kamikazes a very ineffective means uh, a battle tactic basically well especially since you lose your pilot every time you do it not to mention a plane right, right right exactly so of course that was a late war tactic or by the japanese desperation yes yeah, a desperation move right cool right. 